Hello, and welcome to another Redstone Engineering episode. This video will be all about powering, which will include strong and weak power, transparent blocks, and quasi-connectivity. This type of thing could often be overlooked when making a circuit, but it can become extremely important when you're either making large circuits or circuits in very compact spaces, and it can often mitigate frustrations that can arise. With that, let's jump right in. So first off, powering in general refers to whether or not a block is receiving a redstone signal, and both how that block interacts with the redstone components around it, and how the block itself interacts with the redstone signal. So as we can see here, we have a variety of blocks all being powered the same way. The behavior of all of them is different based on their specific interactions from the redstone signal. So for example, we have a transparent block, an opaque block, and a redstone component. And they all have different interactions, as we can see, the transparent block is not powering the redstone lamp, whereas the opaque block is. And here we actually have both happening, where this block is itself an opaque block, so it powers both. The piston is a transparent block, but the piston gets powered while the redstone lamp does not. All of the interactions are different, and you can take advantage of this when making redstone circuits. The first type of block is the opaque block, which is usually what we go to when we want to power a redstone component without powering the component directly. As we can see here, we have a lot of different combinations. The first two are just the difference between strong power and weak power. So this block is weak powered because while it can power redstone components, it doesn't power redstone dust immediately adjacent to it. Whereas this block is strong powered because it can also power redstone components, but it also powers redstone dust. These are different combinations that just show you how the behavior works. Because these are all redstone components, they can be activated either with strong power or weak power. So this one's strong powered, this one's weak powered, this one's weak powered. The comparators also strong power a block. Levers strong power, buttons also strong power, so on and so forth. Something worth mentioning is that redstone dust doesn't power blocks immediately adjacent to it like up here but it does power blocks that it either points into, like this, so if we change the direction, it would unpower this block, and it powers the blocks that it's on top of. All of these powerings are weak powered, meaning that we can do this and cut off this redstone down here, and this no longer gets powered unless it's immediately connected, or with a transparent block on top of it. The difference between strong and weak power isn't always relevant to what you're doing, but it does come up a lot more often than you would think. I was recently wiring up a pathway in my hardcore world, and I had a setup much like this where I needed the signal to come from under the pathway, and I needed it to hook up to all of these torches. And while this looks like an okay setup, and you could turn this on and everything will work just fine, you'll realize that it doesn't turn off. And the reason is that this block is getting strong powered, and so is this block, and it's causing an infinite loop where it won't turn off. If you know the difference between strong and weak power, you can tell that this is a quick fix by simply soft powering this block and doing this so that when this block gets powered it does not power the rest of the dust next to it and now you can see that it works perfectly fine. The next block type is the transparent block. Transparent blocks are used a lot less frequently than opaque blocks because they don't carry redstone signal. However, they do get powered themselves. So as we can see here, we are trying the strong and weak power of glass block here. And we can see that the redstone dust doesn't respond to either of them. And neither does any redstone component. So we can't power anything adjacent to this glass, but it actually is powering the glass itself. And a good example of this is the piston, which is a transparent block itself. Doing this does power the piston, but it doesn't power any adjacent redstone components. Whereas on the contrary, a redstone lamp is an opaque block and it itself gets powered as well as adjacent redstone components. A good example of the difference between the behaviors of opaque blocks and transparent blocks is that of slime blocks and honey blocks as used in flying machines. We will talk about flying machines in depth in a future video, but basically the slime block is opaque and is able to carry the rest of the signal from these observers to the pistons, which allows it to self-propel. Whereas over here, if we replace all the slime blocks with honey blocks, we get that it just straight up doesn't work. It just doesn't work. This piston is happening to get powered by quasi-connectivity, which we'll get to here in a second, but this piston up here doesn't get powered at all, and it just kind of stalls out. This makes slime blocks and honey blocks not fully interchangeable. Now, the last thing I want to go over is quasi-connectivity. Quasi-connectivity is like super weird, and it only exists in Java Edition anyways, so if you're using some form of Bedrock Edition, then you won't be able to take advantage of any of this. 
Quasi-connectivity only works with pistons, droppers, and dispensers, and is when the block above one of those components would be powered if there were some sort of redstone component there. The component in question will be powered as if the block above it was an opaque block. So, for example, this observer, when it observes a block, will activate the air, which acts as a transparent block, above the piston. So while it's not actually connected to the piston, this block would be powered if I put like a lamp here, and thus the piston acts as if it's getting powered. Likewise here, if we power this block, this block would power something here. However, in this instance, because there's no block update happening here, you need to update the block immediately adjacent to the piston in order for it to actually update. And then likewise, if you take this off, it'll stay powered until it's like, oh wait, I need to be unpowered. This can also give the illusion that transparent blocks can power pistons, droppers, and dispensers, whereas it's actually quasi-connectivity, and we can remove this, and we can also replace it with whatever, and the behavior is exactly the same. Alright guys, that will be it for this episode. While powering might not be the most exciting thing, it is used as a backbone for a lot of other things that we'll get into into the future, and is important to know, just like the grammar to a language. I hope you found something of value in this video, and if you have any suggestions or questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.